They may not be Harry and Sally, but these couples are just as charming. Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 underrated rom-com couples. Before we begin, we publish new content every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. For this list, we're taking a look at the couples from romantic comedies who made their films wonderful, but haven't quite gotten the recognition they deserve, no matter how popular the film itself may be. I came to find you. You did. Number 10, Jonathan Traeger and Sarah Thomas, Serendipity. My, My boyfriend. girlfriend. Her boyfriend. His girlfriend. His Her girlfriend. Her boyfriend. John Cusack has starred in some well-known romantic comedies throughout his career, but his chemistry with Kate Beckinsale in this early 2000s gem makes it one of the best. Don't make me come over there. Okay. Okay. Right. If we both randomly pick the same floor, we're meant to be together now. After falling in love one night and leaving it up to fate that they'll meet again, Jonathan and Sarah find themselves at a crossroads years later. Both are engaged to be married, though they've never forgotten each other. I'm John. And it's this idea of defying their life plans for one another that makes them such a unique couple. Number nine, Kumail and Emily Gardner, The Big Sick. To you being a therapist. Great. To me getting my master's, we'll start there and then we'll go to the rest of it. With a relationship like this one, it's easy to see why the movie was nominated for a Best Original Screenplay Oscar. And I know it's only been a few months, but I just wanted to tell you, I. I'm overwhelmed by you. Based on the real relationship of the writers, the film follows Kumail as he struggles with the expectations of his religious family and his feelings for Emily. And things get even more complicated when she's put into a medically induced coma. Zoe Kazan shines as Emily, but what makes the couple special are the choices Kumail has to come to terms with when he thinks he might lose her. I can't be the reason that you don't have a family. This facet, paired with Kumail's eventual willingness to give up nearly everything for love, makes the couple a memorable one. Have you seen him or her? I mean, I don't, I don't know what your deal is, but... Yeah, I've seen him. Number eight, Megan and Graham Eaton. But I'm a cheerleader. Healing? Like rehab, honey. Uh, Homosexuals Anonymous. Poodle. It's only for a few months. This comedy about a high school cheerleader sent to a conversion therapy camp was ahead of its time when it was first released. You want me to do what I want? I could care less. What I really want? Screw you! And the bond between Megan and Graham was definitely one of the highlights. After her parents suspected her of being a lesbian, Megan was sent to True Directions. Only, instead of being cured, she met Graham, a girl more comfortable with who she is. This is bullshit, Megan. It doesn't work. You are who you are. The only trick is not getting caught. Over the course of the movie, the two would begin to balance each other out. Graham would be afraid of her father's disownment, while Megan would begin to accept herself and her feelings for Graham, convincing her to be true to herself. <laughs> Number 7. Donna Stern and Max, Obvious Child a lot of story. Yeah, it is. <laughs> I like your shirt. Thank you. Not many relationships can blossom from a one-night stand, but such is the case with Donna and Max. Jenny Slate plays a comedian going through a particularly rough breakup when she meets the polite Max, played by Jake Lacey. Donna is in desperate need of a wake-up call to adulthood, which comes after her night with Max leaves her pregnant. But it's this unplanned event that pushes the two together as she plans for an abortion. What makes the couple work so well are their vastly different personalities. What about pools? No, no way. Were you peeing pools? I feed in every pool I've ever been in. <laughs> Whereas she's open about every aspect of her life, he's closed off and a bit too self-conscious. Both are flawed, yet they fit wonderfully together. Thank you for coming. Thanks for letting me. <laughs> See you on the other side. Number six. Rachel and Luce, imagine me and you. When you suddenly realized you had been incomplete and now you were whole. Nothing hurts quite like forbidden love. After seeing the florist, Luce, on her wedding day, Rachel is unable to get her out of her head. I'm Luce. Rachel. I did your flowers. You did. My flowers are nice. What follows is a series of touching moments where she struggles with whether or not to stick with her marriage as the two grow closer. You make me feel something, something I absolutely cannot feel. The film may not have impressed many critics, but Piper Perabo and Lena Headey as the two leads bring a heartening romance to life. 
end, their conflicting feelings for what they want versus what's right make the film even more engaging. Number five, Peter Bretter and Rachel Jansen, Forgetting Sarah Marshall. So, uh, how do you like writing music for a TV show? This raunchy Judd Apatow production was incredibly well received thanks to its writing and performances from Jason Siegel, Russell Brand, and Mila Kunis. But the romantic relationship that comes from its plot, about a man who ends up at the same vacation spot as his recent ex and her new beau, often gets overlooked. Siegel and Kunis have fantastic chemistry as Peter and Rachel. Sarah Marshall's show sucks. Who cares? They do the music for that program. Well, psh, did I mention that the music rocks? <laughs> That's very sweet of you. <sighs> Peter's funk from being dumped makes for some excellent self-deprecating humor. But when he begins to see Rachel, the hotel's concierge, her confident personality is so powerful and infectious, it helps him feel comfortable with who he is again. So are you gonna jump or what? No. Oh, come on, Peter, I can see your vagina from here. I can see your hoo-ha. Number four, Peter Warren and Ellen Ellie Andrews, It Happened One Night. Wait. You're not going to notify my father, are you? What for? You probably could get some money out of him. Yeah, I never thought of that. Sometimes the one you need isn't who you're looking for. I beg your pardon? Now listen, I put up a stiff fight for that seat. So if it's just the same to you, scram. In the case of Peter and Ellie, neither of them were looking for love when they met, but it's something that inexplicably grew between them. She's a spoiled newlywed heiress running from her father, while he's a recently fired reporter looking for a story to bring his career back. The delightful and lively performances from Clark Gable and Claudette Colbert are really what sell the story. We can run away. Everything will take care of itself. Please, Peter. I can't let you out of my life now. And by the end, they're both willing to sacrifice everything to be with each other again. This one may have slipped slightly into obscure film history, but it really shouldn't have. Certainly outsmarted your father. I guess you ought to be happy. Number three, Celeste Martin and Jesse Abrams. Celeste and Jesse forever. Don't want to pressure you in anything, but this gentleman is awfully lonely and just here I'll show you how it works. Just This rom-com already differentiates itself from others in the genre by starting with a relationship that's already ended. But the tangible feelings between stars Rashida Jones and Andy Samberg as the titular pair make it even better. After deciding to call it quits on their marriage, Celeste and Jesse remain best friends, though the complicated dynamic becomes worse when they both try to see other people. Can't believe I'm having a baby, and it's not with you. Watching two characters who fit so well together yet can't make it work tugs on the heartstrings. It's the layered performances of the two leads, along with the fresh take on relationships, that makes this one a must-see. I don't know what the rules are, and I'm sure I'm breaking them, but uh, I really... <laughs> I really miss you. Number two, Phil Connors and Rita Hansen, Groundhog Day. But why are you still here? You said stay, so I stayed. While the majority of what makes this 90s comedy work is the hilarious Bill Murray, the romantic relationship that gets built up over the plot is just as vital. At the start, Phil is a jerk reporter who hates the idea of covering the holiday, while Rita is much more pleased with her job. But when Phil is forced to relive the same day over and over, he begins to see how amazing she really is. It's the film's setup that convinces Phil to be a better person. And seeing him live through countless versions of moments with Rita just to make her happy made us fall in love with him in the process. Before we unveil our number one pick, here are some honorable mentions. So if you're scared, why do it? Because the things you're scared of are usually the most worthwhile. Just a theory. What are you going to get? I think I'm going to get the BLT minus the B plus the PC. Plus the PC? Pickles and cheese. <laughs> what? That's not a BLT. You are literally like my musical soulmate. It's unbelievable. Except for all the cure. Number one, Lucy Eleanor Moderatz and Jack Callahan while you were sleeping. For protection. Oh, no, I'm fine. I'm, I'm OK. For me, I don't want to be here by myself. This is Chicago. While this 90s rom-com did well upon release, it hasn't quite been considered a classic, but it more than deserves it. It focuses on a lonely woman who's mistaken as the fiancé of a patient who's in a coma and decides to keep the lie going when she meets his loving family. However, this includes a younger brother, who she actually begins to love over the course of the movie. It's one of the more unique meet-cutes in any romantic comedy, 
and it's propelled forward by one of Sandra Bullock's best performances. For romance fans looking for something that has equal amounts of charm and tender moments, you can't go wrong with this one. Marry me. Do you agree with our picks? Check out these other great clips from Ms. Mojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.